Hello, my name is Nick Pertz. I'm a chess grandmaster from England. And uh, this video series is going to be a full black repertoire um, against the English after c4, playing the move 1 e5. Uh, the English is quite a tricky opening that white players can go for. It's imp increasing in popularity recently, and I think it's often neglected by black players. A lot of people, they focus on a repertoire against e4 and a repertoire against d4, but they don't always uh, consider how to play against the English. So this uh, full repertoire from, for black should hopefully give you a very good chance of equalizing out of the opening or possibly even gaining the advantage in some positions. There are two main positions that will be analyzed in the DVD. Um, there's also some sidelines which will be covered, but the two main lines that we'll be looking at are the four knights, which starts off knight c3, knight f6, knight f3, and knight c6. And uh, the other main alternative is uh, white playing to g3. And after g3, I'm going to be discussing the move pawn to c6, which I think is quite a good fighting move for black if you're looking to try to win games with black against the English. So in the four knights variation, there are several different alternatives for white in this position. Uh, against uh, a3 and also against d3, I'm going to be recommending a setup which involves the kingside fianchetto, pawn g6, which I think is quite logical because uh, a3 is designed against a bishop coming to c5 and is also useful in the kind of reverse Sicilian type positions where black plays with d5. So g3, bishop g7, bishop g2, castles, castles, d6. This is one of the uh, starting positions. And uh, similarly against d3, uh, looking at the lines with g6 and exactly the same setup, g3, bishop g7, bishop g2 will often transpose into the same kind of positions. Uh, I'll also be taking a look at d4, which is quite an aggressive line for white. But after e takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop b4, uh, black seems to be doing quite well theoretically in these lines, but uh, the positions can become quite sharp. Another option for white is to play the move pawn e4, which is much more solid than d4 and tends to lead to quite blocked up positions. Here I'll be looking at bishop b4. Uh, the main uh, problem with bishop c5 is that it gives white the option of playing knight takes e5. And if knight takes e5, d4, in some of these positions, white is able to gain a slight edge. So I think bishop to b4 is probably a stronger continuation. d3 and then d6, and later on the bishop can drop back to c5 if, if that's appropriate. Uh, after knight c6, white could also consider playing e3. Uh, this is actually becoming more and more popular, a very uh, topical idea in the English. Bishop b4. Uh, we analyze some of the sharp lines after knight to d5 and then black playing with e4. Um, if white plays queen c2, which is the main move, then bishop takes c3. And here b takes c3 has been tried out uh, recently at top level for, for white. I think e4 is the strongest move. And after knight g5, queen e7, uh, leading to, again, very double-edged type positions, which seem to be roughly uh, balanced. Instead, after bishop takes c3, white could play queen takes c3, the kind of old main line, queen e7. And uh, our general plan is usually to try and play d5 in a lot of these positions. <clears throat> For example, if white plays b3, a3, or d3, then we'll continue with d5. Against bishop e2, I'm recommending castles. And against d4, which is probably the, the sharpest line, um, the idea of playing knight e4. And in some positions, you can play queen b4 check and try to make it difficult for white to castle. So those, those are the four knights lines that have been covered. Uh, also, after the move to g3, c6, there are a lot of variations in, this chap in these chapters as well. So if white plays d4, I'm going to be looking at lines where black responds by playing e4 and going for these setups where we try to hold the center with e4 and d5. So if queen b3, we play d5. Okay, white has uh, bishop g2, we play d5 as well. White can try to play d5 to disrupt our plan of playing d5. But then uh, bishop b4 check seems to be okay for black. 
And uh, if white plays um, knight c3, d5, uh, c takes d5, the main move, uh, it's worth maybe noting a couple of other options. Queen b3 can be well met by d takes c4. And uh, knight h3 is often uh, well met by h6. The idea of h6 is for black to play knight to f6 without worrying about this pin on uh, with bishop to g5. And black in these variations is often looking to just secure this d5 pawn. And white will often try quite hard to attack that pawn. So knight c3, d5, c takes d5, c takes d5, queen, queen b3. Um, it's also worth noting that a lot of these positions, if you get the opportunity to play with knight c6, you should go for it. Uh, queen b3 and then knight c6 leads to some quite sharp lines, but black's very much holding their own, uh, looking at knight takes d4, uh, with the idea that if white defends the d4 pawn, then we can play knight to f6 and there's no more pin with bishop g5. Um, we'll also be looking at uh, lines involving bishop g2 here and these types of positions as well and uh, after knight f6 c takes d5 c takes d5 bishop g5 trying to defend with a tricky move knight d7 um, with the little tactic that if white plays knight takes d5 uh, we can meet that with the move queen a5 check hitting the knight and uh, also the bishop So after c6, um, white can also consider playing knight to f3. Here we're going to play e4, and after knight d4, d5. Uh, the sidelines that uh, we'll be considering include d3, which is, in my opinion, pretty harmless. Uh, knight c3 and bishop g2 both allow us to capture on c4 and maybe try and gain the advantage in those lines. So c takes d5, queen takes d5. Then there are various options for white in this position. Uh, knight b3 uh, seems to be, again, harmless. e3, uh, bishop c5, knight c3, queen e5. This is one of the lines that's discussed, and there are several lines where black seems to actually gain the advantage in these variations. And in the main lines, uh, the positions are fairly balanced. So knight c2 being the main move, knight f6, and um, knight c3, queen e5, and then bishop g2 really is the critical line. And after knight a6, castles, bishop e7, and then uh, d3, e takes d3. I'll be looking at these positions. This is probably uh, one of the most uh, uh, challenging variations in the English, but again, uh, it does seem as though black's holding his own. So there's also a knight c3, which we can meet well with d5. And there's some sharp lines where white tries to bring his queen out early and they tend to favor black. Uh, b3, which is met by d5, and then queen a4 as well, uh, which is again met by d5 and an interesting pawn sacrifice. c takes d5, bishop d7, uh, which seems to give black a lot of play for the pawn. So after c6, uh, all the the ideas with d4, we're meeting with e4. And uh, in general, if we can play d5, we'll, we'll play d5. And the other critical test is when white plays with knight f3. And against that, we're going to be playing e4. So let's just look at the, the, main, the main moves here. After c6, bishop g2, d5 is another option. c takes d5. I mean, bishop g2 is another option. We play d5, c takes d5, c takes d5. And we're looking at uh, slow moves such as d3, which are really quite harmless. Queen b3, which is probably quite a risky idea for white to play, losing time with his queen. And then d4, e4, and again after knight c3, uh, we'll often be trying to play knight c6 where we can. So I think overall, uh, this is a fairly um, comprehensive uh, coverage of how to play e5 against the English. It is probably well, if not the most reliable option against the English, certainly one of the most reliable options. It's been played by pretty much all the top grandmasters. Magnus Carlsen's played it a lot. Um, one player who, whose games come up uh, over and over is Anish Giri, who seems to be a bit of a theoretical expert in these lines with black. And I've really noticed that he handles these positions very well. 
So his games come up repeatedly. Uh, but again, as I say, many top players play these lines. I think e5 is a, a really um, solid way to, to meet the English. You can gain you know, fairly equal positions without too much trouble. And there are some lines where White can get himself into difficulties if he's not careful.